Welcome back. Uh, we're still focusing our attention on, uh, you know, revising stoichiometric problems, you know. So we've managed to look at, you know, uh, questions that involve multi-steps, some are routine calculations, and we've indicated that if it's a routine calculation, it could be a three-mark type of a question where you identify the correct formula without having to change the subject. You do the necessary substitution, pay attention to the SI unit, and then after that you get the correct answer, including the correct units. Then that could be usually a three mark kind of a problem. But if a calculation question has more than three marks, it may be an indication that it's a multi-step type of a problem. So just pay attention to the mark allocation as well. Now let's focus our attention on a different structured question, still on stoichiometry. Right. A solution of potassium sulfate is prepared by dissolving six grams of potassium sulfate in 500 cubic centimeters of water. So what is important here, uh, potassium sulfate is completely soluble in water, so it dissolves completely. So it will form actually what we'd want to think of as a homogeneous solution, right? So uh, once that happens, uh, we know that uh, all the potassium sulfate has dissolved because it's a group one uh, salt. Right, now the question says calculate the concentration of potassium ion in the solution, okay? Now, first of all, we need to determine the concentration of uh, potassium sulfate first, right? So as far as the concentration in six grams, we would ask ourselves how many moles of potassium sulfate are present? So the moles of potassium sulfate, K2SO4, are present is mass over the molar mass, right? Now, the mass of this sample is six grams, right? Divided by the molar mass. So if we, we go to our periodic table uh, for potassium sulfate, we know that potassium is number element, it has got a mass of 39 grams per mole. So it's gonna be uh, 39 multiplied by two, okay? Plus uh, sulfur, which is a mass of 32, there's only one of sulfur there, plus and then uh, oxygen, which is 16 times four, right? Okay, what does this give us? It gives us 174 grams per mole, okay? So that's the molar mass, 174 grams per mole. So how many moles are present in that? Uh, we are saying, okay, um, by way of calculation, we would say six divided by the molar mass, which is 174, right? Okay, what do we get? It gives us, uh, as a decimal fraction, 0 0.034 moles, right? So this is 0 0.034 mole, right? Furthermore, we also know that uh, in terms of concentration, we know that concentration is equals to moles per unit volume of solution. So what do we have here? We've got 0, um, 0 0.034 moles, okay? 0 0.034 divided by the volume, but this volume is given in cubic centimeters, okay? So it's gonna be 500 multiplied by 10 exponent minus three. This is the conversion because for every cubic decimeter, there's a thousand cubic centimeters. So what's the concentration of potassium sulfate, okay? We'll go to our calculator once more, okay? We know that that's 0 0.034, okay, divided by 500 uh, multiplied by 10 exponent negative three, okay? Um, okay, if we can just uh, put a bracket there so that it becomes very accurate. So you need to familiarize yourself with the use of the scientific calculator, okay? So the concentration uh, as a decimal fraction is 0 0.068, right? So 0 0.068 mole per cubic decimeter, right? So what do we have here? The ionization or the dissociation of the potassium sulfate. For every mole of uh, our potassium sulfate, we get two moles of, the ratio is one is to two, two moles of potassium ion. So the concentration of potassium ions in this is equal to actually two multiplied by 0 0.068, okay? Then this gives us, uh, if we can, quickly calculate that, we we'll get this, we we'll multiply by two, we double it, okay? Then this gives us, um, as a decimal fraction, 0 0.136, right? 
0, 0,136 mol per cubic decimeter. Right, so that's as far as the, the question is concerned. Also, you may think of this as a multi-step type of a problem. And then let's shift our attention to a different scenario altogether. It says here, calcium carbonate is a key component of eggshells. If it says it's a component, it means it's made of, the eggshells are made of calcium carbonate and other substances, okay? Which is uh, very important for skeletons, okay? And then a group of learners decided to determine the percentage composition of calcium carbonate in the shells uh, at it, 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 STP, standard temperature and pressure. So we've got five grand sample of the shells which are crushed and reacted with hydrochloric acid according to the balanced equation of reaction. So the stoichiometric ratio in which they react, it's one is to two, is to one, is to one, is to one, right? That's very important. And then it, this reaction was also conducted at standard temperature and pressure. Now, wait a minute, the moment we see STP, we immediately think of the molar gas volume, that a mole of any gas at standard temperature and pressure would occupy a fixed volume, which is 22,4 cubic decimeter per mole, right? So that's in terms of the table of the physical constant, which is something that you need to familiarize yourself in as far as the formula sheet is concerned, right? So we are told that there is 1,06 cubic decimeters of carbon dioxide which was collected, okay? Now we'd ask ourselves how many moles of carbon dioxide were actually formed, okay? Then we'd work backwards to determine the purity of calcium carbonate, right? Okay, so from this, we know that there's 1,06 more, uh, that's the volume of the carbon dioxide gas that was collected. So in other words, we'll say uh, moles of carbon, okay? Moles of carbon dioxide is equals to volume over molar gas volume. So that's the first part of this multi-step problem. So uh, we can determine uh, the, the, the actual moles of, of, of that. So we would say number of moles of carbon dioxide is equals to um, the volume is 1,06 divided by 22,4, which is the actual molar gas volume, okay? So we can quickly uh, determine that. So that's um, 1,06, okay, divided by 22,4, which is the, the constant. So how many moles are there? 0, 0,047, right? 0, 0,047 moles, okay? Now, if we work backwards, uh, we would ask ourselves that if one mole of carbon dioxide is produced by one mole of calcium carbonate, okay? It means how many moles of calcium carbonate are present? So the moles of calcium carbonate uh, is actually equals to um, the same number of moles because it's one is to one, is equals to 0, 0,047 mole. Okay, this is based on the stoichiometric ratio, right? Now, I would also ask ourselves that, okay, what's the mass of 0, 0,047 moles of calcium carbonate? We'd know that again, uh, the moles of calcium carbonate um, is equal to, okay, the mass over the molar mass. Now, we also uh, actually need to, to to, to do that calculation, but we know that uh, this is 0, 0,047. And the mass of calcium carbonate is actually 100 grams per mole. You can verify that on the, on the calculator. Then we want to ask ourselves of the five gram sample, okay, what is the actual uh, mass of calcium carbonate? Because remember, we said this calcium carbonate uh, is contained in eggshells. It means there is calcium carbonate in some other substances. Then what's the mass of calcium carbonate that is present in that sample? So we'll go back, okay, and, and actually um, uh, do that calculation. On our calculator, what do we have? Uh, we're gonna have 0, 0,047, okay, um, multiplied by 100, okay. If we multiply that by 100, uh, we get uh, 4,7, right? Now, what is this 4,7 grams? 
Right, let's, let's break this down and bring this into context. Now, the sample of the eggshell, the total mass, is actually uh, uh, five grams. Now, of that five grams, only 4,7 grams is actually calcium carbonate. So in, in other words, we are saying that a major component of that eggshell consists of calcium carbonate, which is 4,7. Then it means the remainder thereof actually is the impurity. Okay, so we can, in a way, get to a point where we are able to determine the percentage purity, right? So how do we move from this? Now, this is the actual mass of calcium carbonate, right? Now, if we want to determine the percentage purity, we know that percentage purity, okay, that's the last part of our multi-step problem, is equals to mass of calcium carbonate in sample, okay? divided by total mass, okay, multiplied by 100, right. So in this case, what do we have? We have uh, the total mass, the mass of the calcium carbonate that we've managed to calculate is 4,7 grams, okay, divided by the total mass of the sample, which is uh, uh, um, 5 grams, right. We multiply this by 100, okay. So if we go to our calculator. This is the, the easy part because we've done all the science now. It's just the calculation that's left. What do we have? We have 4,7, okay, divided by the total mass of the sample, which is 5. We're going to multiply this by 100, okay? This gives us 94%, um, right? Okay, this gives us 94%, right? So now what does the 94% purity mean? It means of the five gram sample of the eggshell, what is actually calcium carbonate is 94%, and then the remainder is actually other substance that did not take part in the reaction in forming the carbon dioxide that we collected. So we need to practice these kind of problems you know, quite often so that you become more comfortable in them. So now we've managed to cover most of the important things about these stoichiometric calculations. So practice becomes very, very important. Everything of the best.